Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about HashiCorp Packer and how you can build standardized VM images across the cloud. Now, if you made it to this video, you already might have an idea of what Packer is, or you might've just found this video looking to learn what Packer is. So HashiCorp Packer is an open source tool that allows you to create VM images in a cloud across multiple different providers. So you can create images for AWS, Azure, VMware, even stuff like Proxmox, all from the same configuration files. Today, that's what we're gonna be talking about. So first things first, we're gonna be going over a few slides in the slide deck to explain a little bit more of what HashiCorp Packer is, how it works, what the workflow is like, what is HDL2, and then we're gonna round it off with a big demo, and we're gonna be building VM images within DigitalOcean using Packer. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go through all the configuration, we're gonna go through variables, we're gonna go through local variables, and we're gonna go through API tokens, SSH, you name it, everything that is involved with building a Packer image on the back end, as far as needing API access to your provider, we're gonna go through all that. And at the end, we're gonna have a specific web server, Nginx, just to be able to test that we created a standardized image. That way we can have a proof of concept. So if this interests you, stay tuned and let's get building. Welcome to the Packer Crash Course. Now what you can see on this main page is this is about Packer and HashiCorp. On the right side, this is an image that from HashiCorp, what means the Hashi stack. So the main HashiCorp components that you'll hear about is Terraform, Vault, Console, and Nomad. Where Packer fits in this whole flow is right here between the cloud provider, and Terraform, if you ask me, because Terraform, Vault, and Console servers, and everything in Nomad all be based off hardened or standardized Packer images for the VMs. So if you ask me, Packer sits a little bit between these two. It's just not included in their main stack because it's not part of the main operational stack. It's more of a configuration development stack. But first things first, what is HashiCorp Packer? We already mentioned that it's open source. So it's used to create identical images for multiple platforms such as Azure and AWS from a single configuration file or files. It allows you to create machine images from a static unit, which means you can create a pre-configured operating system, install whatever software you need, have that used to create new running machines. This comes very important when it comes to building uh, auto scaling groups. When you're scaling out in the cloud, you need to make sure that your images are the same across. If you have a web server being load balanced across three images, those three nodes need to be built from the same image. So that's where Packer comes in, create the images for those nodes. And as we've already mentioned, it's multi-cloud. It works in AWS, it works for Azure, it works for GCP. It works for VMware and on-prem solutions. It works for open source VMs like Proxmox. You could even build Docker containers with it, but there is some limitation on the Docker side. And one of the big things is to be able to combine with configuration management. It is very, very common to see a Packer CI/CD pipeline or a Packer build step where a provisioner calls an Ansible playbook. And these playbooks are used to define your infrastructure or how you want the server configured within YAML code. So one of the common use cases, you will see uh, security benchmarks placed within uh, Ansible scripts and Ansible playbooks. Hacker, whenever it builds the image to AWS, will run the Ansible, let's say like a CIS hardened playbook, which that's security baselines for the server, removes insecure defaults and makes sure the server is secure for creating the image from it. This creates a secure baseline for you to build everything upon. So there's usually a multiple tier approach in production environments where you have Packer build a, let's say a base CIS hardened image or a DIS a STIG for government stuff. And then you have Packer on top of that building the service level things, Kubernetes nodes, Nginx web servers, load balancers. So you have a multi-tier approach to building your services. Now, why use Packer? It's really high performant. You give it some configuration files and you run it and it does it within a few minutes. If you were to do all these things manually, you'd have to run all the steps, you'd have to go through a run book or even a shell script that could potentially break. Um, this is where Packer comes in because it provides that portability to be able to build the image in AWS, have the same thing in Azure, have the same thing in GCP, have the same thing on-prem. That way you have that consistent standardization and also allows you to have increased testing, especially when it comes to integration testing. I know I personally, when I create Packer hardened images, I put in a CI CD pipeline where I can run integration tests at the end. So if I'm running an Nginx web server or a Kubernetes node, what I'll do is I'll run an integration test against that to make sure that the web service is running, make sure that you can install software. So pretty much looking to make sure that the server is still usable for its use. You can do that with Packer and in other tools. 
So by being able to create things on the fly, you can test. And if it doesn't work, you fail rebuild. It gives you that quick CI CD, that circular motion of quick feedback. It builds into the whole DevOps practice. What does this look like? So as a user, we create Packer HCL files where we can define our image and then install software or install and configure security benchmarks. And then we can push this up to Amazon EC2s, push this to Azure VMs. We can even push the same configuration to a Docker container. That's the manual approach. What does this look like in CI CD? Just one extra step. Instead of pushing the files directly, we hand that off to something like GitHub and use a GitHub action to do all this stuff for us. So it's very portable and it's very, very good for CI CD practices to automate this stuff, which you should. You should have an automated CI CD practice, but that's out of scope for this tutorial. This is a crash course. So you just need to get the basics before we do the crazy advanced stuff. So now with all that being said, there's only one thing left to look at. HCL2 is the HashiCorp language. It was derived, basically looks like JSON a little bit. You'll notice because everything is in curly brackets, but you define things such as like object blocks. You could say that we have a source, Amazon EBS, which means the Amazon EBS backed vault EC2 instances, and then we pass it some variables and values. You can see all that here. And this is everything that's required from this provider. Then after a source, you have to specify what a builder is. The builder is saying, hey, what sources am I going to build in this file? And what provisioners am I going to run from it? In this case, it's building Amazon EBS, running multiple provisioners. And you can see a provisioner can be, let's send a file to the server. You know, this could be web server code. This could be static files. It could be whatever it is for your application. You can be moving jar files. Um, provisioner shell, which is running shell commands on the host directly. So you can see here that it's just catting out a welcome text. It's listing the volume, listing the home directory, I mean. And you can also have a provisioner shell, which means, hey, I'm going to run a shell script that I have locally where I'm building this on the machine in the end. So this is where the automation starts coming. This is also where you can run provisioner Ansible to run Ansible script. Now that you know what ACL2 looks like, all that's left to do is let's get building. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have DigitalOcean set up. We're going to build our standardized snapshot images within DigitalOcean. So that way you have easy access to something and you don't have to worry about a big cloud bill if you mess up, forget, or leave things running. So let's get building. First things first, you have to have Packer installed to run Packer. So if you go to Packer.io, you can see right here, there's an install Packer. And you can find whatever host you're building this on. You're running Mac OS, Windows, Linux, hopefully not free BSD, but just so you know, it exists. They even have ARM images just in case. So now that you have Packer, you need to make sure we have the documentation. So we, it's impossible to remember everything there is to build an image because there's so many configuration options. So we're going to be building with DigitalOcean. What you're going to do is you want to go to Plugins, DigitalOcean, and Builders, DigitalOcean. Over here, this is everything we need to start building things on Leaves final step. We need to use DigitalOcean. Well, if you don't have a DigitalOcean account, go ahead and create one and come back to this video. Once you're at this screen where you have no droplets, no images, you have a base account, or you maybe already even have a DigitalOcean account, but we just need to make sure that you're ready to go. Once you have your DigitalOcean account and Packer's installed and your documentation's ready, time to pull up your favorite text editor or IDE. I actually use Goland or PyCharms because I write Go code, but I also find that the IntelliJ products have better HCL2 syntax like IntelliSense and Autocomplete for Terraform. So this is my preferred. You can use VS Code. I know people that use that too. So get all that stuff ready to go and then come back to this. Now that you have everything ready, we just have two more small steps before we start coding. That is, we just have to get our DigitalOcean stuff set up out of the way so that way we can do things. First things first, you need to create an API key. So go over here and hit generate new token. Generate a token, give it a name, so testing, give it an expiry, and make sure it has read and write permission. Generate token. Now it's really important, copy this now because you will never be able to retrieve this string again. So therefore, write it down, put it in notepad, and get ready to use it and hold it off to the side. Now that you got your API token, we need to create some SSH keys. We need our Packer provisioner to be able to communicate to our instance using a communicator, which is the package term, um, a Packer term to be able to provision our instance. So what we need to do is we need to create SSH keys and upload them to DigitalOcean. If you already know how to do that, feel free to skip ahead. First thing you want to do is you want to 
open up a terminal. You just want to run SSH keygen, dash T is the type of RSA, and dash B for bytes of 4096. Let's go ahead and hit enter. We're going to name this digital in testing. You don't want a pass phrase. Put one if you want, but I don't recommend it at the time. And there you go. Now, what we're going to actually have to do is you can see I have a few different keys here. We're going to have to upload this public key to DigitalOcean. So going back over to our browser, I want you to go to Settings, Security, Add SSH key, give it a name, and upload your SSH key content in here and add SSH. So for demo purposes, digital testing dot pub, you want your public key. Never want to put your private key in it. Private for a reason. There you go. And then hit add SSH key. Now we're ready to start doing things in Packer. And let's get over to your IDE. Now that you're ready to get Packer coding, that's a dumb term. What you want to do is create a directory to hold your files. And you can see here I created something called Packer Crash Course slash prod. Prod as in production value for the video because I'm producing this. And what we want to do is we got to create two files and a folder. Files that we're going to create are Packer files. So those are post fixed with a dot PKR dot HCL. So we need a main dot touch dot main dot Packer HCL. And I'm also going to do a vars. Now what this is going to do is going to separate our main configuration files and our variables into their own files. You could put these in the same thing. The way Packer and Terraform works is it pulls in whatever files in those directories and runs the, uh, it, the program pulls in all the files and does what it needs to. So you can separate these out as things get more complex. And just for best practices, we're actually going to do that. Now, the other thing we need to do is since we're going to be using a script to help bootstrap our web server, I'm just going to create a directory called scripts. So I can do this from the command line. Or you can just go into your IDE and right click and hit new whatever. So let's open these up and get started. So the first thing we need to do in our main is we need to define our Packer block. Packer block is how you define the credentials, not credentials, the, um, the plugin that you want to use for the builder. That's our case is DigitalOcean. You can actually find this right here. What this says is you can require the DigitalOcean plugin any version equal to or greater than one from the source code, which is on GitHub. Go ahead and just copy that. Go back and paste. That's the first block we need. Now we need to create our source. So our source is going to be what is the source for this Packer configuration? And that's going to be digital ocean, which is going to match the name of this one. And we need to reference this source with a name. And this can be anything. You can name this testing, you can name this something, you can name this whatever, whatever big string you want. I'm just going to call it that way we're talking about this configuration. Now we need to define it in curly braces block. Now the next thing we need to define is our build block. So that's with a build, brackets, and what sources are we gonna build? So if you do a sources equals and then um, an array, so, or um, a list, depending on what you're comfortable with, we're gonna say source dot, name of the source, middle, ocean, and then, what source we're referencing. Yes. Now, if you had multiple sources for DigitalOcean, you can have multiple AMIs and you can say a DigitalOcean, this one, this two, Ubuntu, CentOS. Now, I wouldn't recommend putting them all in the same configuration. Those all should be in their own separate configuration files. But just so you know, that's what you can do. Now, if we wanted to push this configuration, let's say to DigitalOcean and AWS, we would add the additional required plugin and we would add the additional required source and then add it within the sources if we wanted to build the same image. To build. Now that we got our build, it's time to define a provisioner block. We're not going to have anything in here yet, but let's just get the scaffolding done. So you define this with a provisioner. We're going to call shell. So we need a shell provisioner. It's shell provisioner to be able to do things to our server before we make the snapshot. So this is going to be an inline provisioner. Once again, it's going to be a list of strings. Here we would have thing apt get install 
up dot, but just for the time being in our first test, I'm gonna go to, um, who am I? That way when we create this, we can see it's actually working. And that's pretty much the main scaffolding for a Packer file. Now what we need to do is start defining the values and variables to create our source. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over back up to here to our source and start defining these. If we look at our documentation for the source, we have some required ones, such as API token, which is required. So what's required is API token, the region where we're gonna deploy it. So we're gonna do New York City one, at least for me, the size, so how many CP, how much RAM we want, and what image we're gonna use. And that's gonna be either Ubuntu, CentOS, Rocky Linux, but for this tutorial, we're gonna use everybody here. First things first, we define our API. So we're gonna do API token equals, and let's just leave these things blank for now. Get all of our configuration done, and then we'll start supplying the variables through a variable file. What we also wanna do is we wanna give our droplet a name as it's provisioning. That way, if we see this thing running, we know that it's a packer job. Leave that like that. Equals. Now we need an image. Now we need a region. Size, I mentioned before. Now, the next things we need to define are snapshot related. So when we create the snapshot that we're gonna be creating droplets off of, what name do we want for it? That blank. Then what regions do we want the snapshot to exist in after it's created? Usually if you're creating things in the cloud and you usually have things across multiple different regions for DR, you wanna be able to share that same image. So that's where this comes in. So we're gonna share this image to another region within New York City. So we'll do NYC2 or NYC2. And if you're in AWS world, then you can put things in North Virginia or Ohio and they have their own way of doing this. But for DigitalOcean, which is snapshot region. So now we need to actually define when our, when our Packer server packet, when our Packer job is running, when it's gonna make the connection to our instance, we need to define an SSH. By default, Packer actually, or I'm sorry, DigitalOcean uses root for the default user, not like AWS or Azure where it uses Ubuntu. We need an SSH username that's gonna use for the communicator. And then we're gonna give this droplet some tags. So that way we know when something's running, we can tag our resources saying, hey, this belongs to the development environment. This is the Packer resource. This belongs to this team, et cetera. So I wanna make sure you define some. Now that we got all our configuration scaffolded up, I'm gonna give you some time to catch up and then return to this. Now that you're caught up, it's time to start defining the variables. And what you're gonna do is you wanna go into the VARS file and let's just split this to the right. That way we can see what we're building as we go. Now in Packer and in Terraform in general, um, HCL in general, actually, when you're defining a variable, you define a variable block like this. Each variable block at least needs a description, type, so what type is it? Is it a string, a number, and then default. What the default value is for this variable when we define it. This is where you define what the value is gonna be. Now there are things such as auto TF bars and auto packer bars, which come in handy whenever you're defining multiple environments from the same script. We're not gonna get into that today. That's a little bit more advanced. And honestly with packer, it doesn't work as well as Terraform uh, auto TF bars. So I don't think there's a reason to use a multiple environment setup for packer, at least in this use case. So based off this, variable declaration, we're gonna create all our variables. If you look over here to the left, we need one for API, droplet, image, and so on. My rule of thumb is I like to use the same name for the actual configuration for the variable. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna create the I token. And we're gonna create droplet name. Image. Create. In. Size. And so on. And the snapshot stuff. So we need snapshot name. 
you can feel free to do this stuff at your own pace. I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead and get these all defined out and we'll review them in this quick jump. Now that we got all our variables to find out, let's just start filling some of these things. So our, let's, we can remove this default one. We don't need to send. So for API token, let's give it a description. Little ocean. And actually, we're not going to put that token in. I'm going to teach you something to use environmental variables. That way, this is a little bit more secure. And you can see that HCL has some functions defined in it. So the function name is env. And we're going to call this environmental variable digital and underscore token. And before we run our packer, we'll define this variable. So that way, the configuration can pick. Now, droplet name is what we want to call this. The description name of string and one two engine x test. Now the image, the desired image packer. And now in um packer language, look at this value here. We just say we want to use Ubuntu 20-04 and x64. Now, if you look at their documentation, their website, you can find out what the other images are available. For you, we're going to use Ubuntu. So for region, say desired region. This is another string, and we're going to call this y. Want to do a different region? Feel free to look at their website or in the documentation for the available. Now the size. Now the size is the desired. CPU and the RAM size instance, say for the droplet. You can tell I work in AWS. Now, these are all different depending on if you want to share it or dedicate it or how much CPU, but the convention generally follows S for shared, dash for how many CPUs, dash for how many gigabytes it is, dash whatever CPU. Right now, they have new Intel and AMDs, and we're going to define a 1V CPU, 1 gigabyte image size. Want to do a different size? You can find this on their website and document. Once our packer job is done, what do we want to call this name? What do we want to name this snapshot? So let's just do Ubuntu Nginx standard. Now we're going to tweak this again later, but for now, we're actually going to just put this something simple. Go down here. Name of the. Because it is best practice when you create a standard image to timestamp it. So that way, whoever is consuming your images, if anybody else is, they know what the newest version is based on the name of it. I'm going to show you how to do that. Now we need to define what regions we want to put this in. So we want the snapshot regions to exist in more than one. This is actually going to be not just a string. We're going to define a list of strings. So this needs to be. Brackets like an array or a string. Here we'll do NYC one, comma, YC. And what this does is saying when it takes a snapshot, let's take the snapshot for multiple regions. Now we need to define the username for the SSH communicator, which by default in DigitalOcean is ntags. Tags actually needs changed as well. So this is no longer a string, it's another list. Find these so. so they're not like AWS tags where the key value, they're just keys, they're just values. So we want to do relevant environment by Packer belongs to the cloud team. And what let's say it's Ubuntu, say the version. It's always good to get verbose in your tags. That way, if you need to search across things, you want to find out how many different instances are running 20.04 Ubuntu, you can search that by tags. Now that we have all our variables defined, let's get them over in our main file. To do that, we're going to use something what's called interpolation syntax. In your quotes, you're going to put a dollar sign and curly braces. What this does is allows us to reference the variable name. So we'll do a var dot and then the name of the variable. Copy that out. That's it. That's how we define our variables. Do it for another one. And then I'm going to leave the video off for you to finish up the rest. And we can meet back at the jump cut. Bar dot droplet names that way. Here. 
All right, you feel free to finish out the rest and I will catch you in a few seconds. Okay, now that you filled everything out, you should have something that looks like this. Now there's actually one more thing that we need to do. I mentioned that we need to put a timestamp on the name of these droplets and the snapshot. To do that, we're going to create what's called a locals block within HCL. And a locals block is scoped to just this configuration file and it doesn't get replicated. We we'll just do a locals and we're going to call this timestamp. We're going to call format date, which means we're going to format whatever date we put in. Format for the date is going to be in a string. Let's do yyy dash m means you use a four date format for the year and a two date format for the month. And where we're going to get our timestamp from? Timestamp call. HCL is based off of Golang, so it has the Golang functions available to it. Not all of them, just some of them. And that's how they, the developers design it. So now we want to use this. And to use that, we're going to use it in here. So let's do a dash. And we're going to do more interpolation syntax. And we're going to timestamp. I'm sorry, let's say local, so it's a local variable, but timestamp. Let's reference this. Copy this block down to the snapshot. So now when we see this droplet running and creating an image, we're going to see that it's doing something based on this date. And then when the final snapshot is created, we'll know that our latest snapshot was made on this day, this month. I'm sorry, of this month. Generally, you make snapshots and new standard images every month or every 90 days uh, depends on what your use case is you might go down to the days but for me i've always just used monthly ones so it's good to know you have a new one every month and it's updated and you can reference it by the name so now our base configuration is done now let's start looking at the packer command so within the directory itself we have a few things available to us first thing we want to do run a packer format we want to format this period. So what that says, anything in this directory, it's formatted. See here, formatted two files. And we look over, it lined everything up. The next thing that you want to do, you always want to validate. Once again, with a period, look, because this object does not have an attribute named snapshot region. Oh, see, I forgot to ask. This is why you want to validate. Stuff on purpose. Buying effort. But Packer validate, now the configuration is valid. Or is it? What did I say that we needed to define earlier? Digital ocean token. So you notice that it doesn't have any visibility into if this is set correctly or not. So what we want to do is you want to export digital ocean token, like so. And make sure it's all caps underscore at this format and then equals the string of the token. This way, Packer knows to use the API key to do what it needs. Run packer validate again. Still valid. Now we're ready to run our first build. So if you run packer build period, things just start working. So let's look at this output. Everything is correctly. You should start seeing everything in green. So it says creating a temporary SSH key for the instance. What it's going to do is going to create its own SSH keys to provision the packer instance itself. And it's importing that to the server from using the um, the API's backend of DigitalOcean. So it's creating the droplet. We go back over to here. Actually, let's go to our DigitalOcean account and look at our droplets. And we can see one was already created. Remember, I mentioned that this is performant. We can see that the Ubuntu Nginx test droplet 2022.03 created. Now let's go and check on our snapshot. So if we go over to images. You can see there's nothing in here right now. So let's go back to our terminal. What's going on. All right. So we see that it made the connection. Ran the shell script to get here. Who am I in line? Which is root. So that's working. Now it's gracefully shutting down the instance and going to create a snapshot from it. And instead of sitting here painstakingly watching this output, what we're going to do is I'm going to jump forward to when the snapshot completes. That way, me and you are on the same page. See you in a second. All right. Now that we're back, you should see something similar saying that the build of this output has finished and the wait is completed. So if we go back over to our... There should no longer be a droplet. I'm loading. We should have a snapshot. Now, this is our standard image. 
and it's completed. We made our first image, but we're not done yet. Let's do a little extra configuration to show you that you can do multiple provisioners within the same configuration file. So we had our simple inline one here, but we don't want to use that root user. Say we want to create a user that we can log on to and be like other cloud instances or AMIs. And what we want to do is let's create group, create this group, group add, has a dash G for the number of 1001. Give it the name Ubuntu. Now we need to create the user for Ubuntu. User add Ubuntu dash 1001. We'll give it a user ID of 1001. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a user and a group for Ubuntu and give it a GUID and a UID of 1001. And then let's just say we want to run a update the systems. apt get update. Make sure that our apt packages are up. So this is our single provisioner. Let's create one more. This other provisioner we're going to create is going to use a shell script that's actually going to create Nginx web server for us and make sure that it's serving traffic. To do that, we're going to create another provisioner shell. Here. 1s a block script and a string this time path so the path is going to be scripts slash something called uh a boot wrap sh now if we go back into here remember we created that directory earlier with scripts and let's add a file. It's a new file called boot. .sh. All right. So define to define a shell script. What we need to do is we need to give it a shebang, and that shebang is going to be at pound sign exclamation point slash in slash Bash. I'm going to use bash. What we're going to do is we're going to run an apt get dash o. Now, sometimes when you're running automation, you're running apt install and apt get and apt updates, sometimes the package lock from dpkg gets locked by another process. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that waits till it finishes to finish it. So we're going to do a dpkg. We're going to give it two colons, lock, colons, timeout equals negative one. So this means just wait until the package lock is removed to finish the script. So what we're going to do is install in X dash Y. And we're going to do a system CTO enable in X. And what this is going to do is going to make sure that it installs Nginx and enables it on runtime. So that way when we create a droplet from our snapshot, we should be able to see a web. Go ahead and save that. And let's go back into our variables and let's change our snapshot name to Nginx standard dash one, just to, just to separate it. Packer format to make sure it's formatted. Or packer validate to make sure it's still valid. Then our packer. So once again, we'll be looking at this screen. If you typed in everything correctly, you should be prompted with correct screen. So I'm going to disappear for three minutes and for you, it'll be half a second. So catch you in a few seconds. So now that this job is finished, you can see that it created another snapshot. Created as Ubuntu Nginx standard one, 203. Back into DigitalOcean. We can see here's our new snapshot. Now to test and verify this, Let's create a droplet from it. You just go to more, create droplet. Basic one here for $6 a month, but we're gonna terminate this immediately. Pick whatever CPU options you want, region you want. So right now the snapshot's only available to one and three within New York. So we're gonna pick one. And let's pick an SSH key. That way this gets baked into the image and that we can, so we can see there, 
And let's just pick the default host name. Create the droplet. This, actually, I'm not going to cut over because these actually create pretty quickly. What we're going to do is, just, in the meantime, I'm going to get the key address for it to finish. So now our droplet has successfully been created. So we should be able to just go to a There you go. Created a standardized Nginx image. And you should have seen something real similar to this. So let's also test the other thing. SSH. Let's do a dash I. So my key is digital root app. See what the server looks like. See, this is the server. The home directory. There's our new user as well. So we created a standardized image and we were able to create an Nginx web server from it and create a user. See how we can replicate this across multiple different environments. So if we wanted this same image and application in Azure, we just create another provider for that, another configuration and run it and deploy it out. Now you can see the power of Packer and how if you were to involve Ansible in it, to create standard images across anything is possible. So if you're not using Packer yet, use it now. I hope you enjoyed everything in this video and that you made it this far. And if you did, please hit the thumbs up, please hit the like button and subscribe. I plan on creating more videos more frequently and I hope to see you soon. Have a good one.